know, there are often times when I'm out on a daily walk where I'll spot things that kind of attract my attention, whether that's a particular scene or a particular composition, but I don't always have my camera with me because, well, look at the size of this camera bag. But in a weird way, I don't necessarily consider the act of going out and doing photography as exclusively an activity that is done with the camera in your hand because I was on this walk yesterday. It's a walk that I can do from my house and it takes about an hour. It's a good circular walk. It goes through some woodlands. It's got some nice vistas that I'll show you a little bit later on. And there were just certain things that I observed when I was on my walk yesterday that I thought to myself, that would make quite a nice photo. And that exercise in observation is something that I think we should all be doing as photographers, but it's not quite as simple as it sounds. So let's talk about it in a bit more detail in this video. So when I came on this walk yesterday, I was with my girlfriend Alex and we were just on a little bit of a Sunday afternoon stroll. So I didn't bring the camera, didn't bring my camera bag, but it was this exact same time of day as we are today. And it was all of this kind of dappled light that you can see just in this woodland behind me. There's an open field behind this line of trees and with the angle of the sun as it is at this time of day, and with these really nice kind of like vibrant green colors that we're getting in the minute because spring and summer are definitely here now it just meant that the leaves were really nicely backlit and it made for a really pleasing scene and i definitely wanted to make sure that i came back with my camera to capture that so this is the exact reason that i tend to not bring my bag out with me all the time because it is pretty heavy, especially on hot summer days like this. But this whole sort of video is about observation and it is always a good sign that you're progressing as a photographer and that your skills are improving if you are able to take in your surroundings and visualize compositions and scenes as if you had your camera with you. So the human eye has a 35 mil equivalent focal length or field of vision, if you like, of anywhere from around 40 to 50 millimeters. And some people say it's a little bit wider, maybe around 28 mil if you take in sort of like peripheral vision. But in terms of what you see in your immediate field of view, you're looking at roughly a sort of mid focal length of around 40 to 50 millimeters. And that means that then when you're packing your camera bag at home, if you're wanting to come back to revisit scenes that you've seen with your eye, then you kind of know roughly what sort of like focal length you might want to pack, whether that's a zoom lens or a couple of prime lenses. And that will then stop you from just seeing things as being, I guess, pleasing compositions or pleasing scenes it takes it to another level of being slightly more analytical because then you're not only taking in the scene as being something that looks nice but you're actually analyzing it and i guess converting it into a focal length and into a piece of equipment that lies in your camera bag and there's a few reasons why i think that is really important and why that can lead to such good photographic results if you keep practicing this and if you observe the world around you in this way. So I think the first reason that this exercise in observation is so valuable to anyone at any level of photography is because we naturally put up barriers to go out and take photos, whether that is something to do with the weather, whether it's me, like I was saying, going out for a walk yesterday and not wanting to take all of my equipment with me. And I think that means that we're potentially not going out as often as we would like to. 
But just because we're not going out frequently, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't get good results on those occasions where we do go out. And this idea of observation and taking in your surroundings just means that when you do go out into the field, when you have the time or where you have the right conditions, it just means that you're going to maximise your potential of getting photos that you're happy with. And that's something that I've mentioned on, in other videos on this channel. And I think the second reason that this exercise is so valuable is that it actually means that we can enjoy the process of being outdoors. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos or if you've been a subscriber of this channel for some time, and if you're not, now is a great time to hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy these types of videos. But if you have watched my channel for a while, you know that the main reason that I became interested in photography is because of my love of the outdoors and my love of nature. And sometimes I just like to be able to go out and visualize things without having the barrier of worrying about photography. It just means that if I'm training my eye and I'm tuning my eye into my kind of camera focal length, if you like, that idea of if you observe quite frequently with the idea of observing as if you were a photographer, you're kind of viewing the world in focal lengths almost. And all that means is that you can be more objective with your, I guess, your scenes and your compositions that you find. You might find that you can disregard things more quickly rather than just kind of stopping, taking your camera bag off, setting up a tripod, getting out your camera, putting on some filters, only to find that you don't really have anything there that's worth taking a photo of. And for me personally, that just diminishes my experience of being out in the field. I wanna only be getting my camera out when I'm sure that I've got something good to photograph. So this scene that I have kind of framed up here is one that I saw yesterday that is a good example of that point that I was just talking about, about tuning in your eye to the focal lengths that you have in your bag. Now, this kind of scene here is just of the gate going down the path, but I wanted to get these kind of like hills that you can see in the background here. I wanted to make sure that that was in the frame, but as my sort of like naked eye would view it, it's kind of, there's not enough compression in the scene. If I put this kind of, how I tend to look at it. It's probably something a bit more like that, where you then start to kind of lose the impact of the hills on the Cheshire Plains that we can see in the distance. But just by kind of zooming in a little bit more, you're just adding in that compression. And if you know when you're out in the field and you're observing that, you know, okay, this isn't a great scene now, but I know that if I had like my 85 mil macro lens or a 70 to 200, then I'd be able to really compress that and get that scene how I want it. That's when you know you're onto a winner. I guess the main challenge with this exercise is just not to take everything that you see at face value. Try and work the scene in your mind before you take out the camera. It's like with that last example, you know, it looked great through my eye, but I just knew that if I had a longer focal length, I'd be able to compress it and I'd get a little bit more out of the scene because everything would sort of sit in the frame slightly more pleasingly. And it's that that you need to keep in mind. It's that that you need to practice because that is gonna be the thing that stops you getting your camera out unnecessarily. And that's gonna be the thing that gets you taking photos more frequently that you are happy with. Now, I hope this video is making sense because I thought about this topic when I was kind of walking up this road yesterday and it was actually just something that I thought was worth sharing. And there probably are loads of videos on YouTube of people talking about this topic because it's by no means original but I do think it's something that is important to share because if you are just getting into photography or you know even if you're just kind of like trying to get the most out of the focal lengths that you have then being able to visualize what your focal lengths look like without your camera so you can assess the kind of worth of any particular composition and I think it's just something that is going to give you better results in the field and just make photography more enjoyable. So if you have enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful and let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you do. I'm pretty sure it will be but hopefully the insight that I've tried to give in this video will just give you a few more things to try out if you're just looking to take this idea of observation to a higher level 
and to be slightly more analytical and objective with your process when you're out and about. So as always, thank you so much for watching this video. I am gonna carry on this route walking home with my heavy bag, but it's been really enjoyable. I've really loved making this video. It's such a nice day today. It's really hot, but well worth it just to come back and revisit some of these places that I saw yesterday. And if you've enjoyed it, like I said, do consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell to get notified. Man, there's a lot of stuff to say on YouTube, isn't there? But anyway, you know what to do. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you all next Thursday for another video.